My name is Rogelio Franco. I born and grew up in Transylvania. I came today to suck your blood. <laughs> <laughs> to suck your blood because success, okay? Everybody wants to be success here. I, when I was in Mexico, I always saw businesses going and coming and go. But after 30 years, why they still want to create a business? If the statistics show that the 90% of the business is gonna fail in less than 10 years, why they gonna continue trading? Why you guys want to do a business? It's better to go and get an employment, right? Well, that is the reason. When I was looking these things in, in Mexico, I understand that in order to be successful, you need to have skills. The Wright brothers said, you can fly, but you cannot fly. You can fly without wings, without motors, but you cannot fly without skills. So skills, what kind of skills we're gonna need in order to be successful? That's a, a tricky question. Did you know that by cutting your cost, you're gonna earn 50% more money in your company? The companies fail because they cannot pay the bills. Companies fail because they want to spend more money for the one you are earning. That's another thing. So what are that secrets for, for creating a profitable business? I know today, if you allow yourself to understand my wonderful accent, I can show you that skills. So, something like a plan, just help me with that. I'm gonna help you with this e experience. So, let's start with with my life. Let's track back 30 years ago in my country. My mom, she decided to train me. She bought me some popsicles. And I, I, I grew up in a cow farm. And I saw far away a, a, a woman. I was running, running, running with the popsicles. The only training that I got was this. Go and find somebody and sell the popsicles. And I did it. Hey, miss, 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 do you want to buy a popsicle? It was a long run. I was super, super tired for the long run. Do you really believe that the woman wants to buy a popsicle? Absolutely not. But she bought it because I did my best effort. Therefore, I understand the best, best, best thing then, the best first skill that you need to understand. Believe in yourself. That's the very first skill that you need to understand. Believe in yourself. You can do it no matter what. I remember there is a Chinese general, Sun Tzu. In the 21st law, Sun Tzu uh, taught us, know yourself and you will win the battles. Oh, that's really interesting. So know yourself and you will win all the battles. After the popsicle experience, my mother decided to train me in a different way. Now what's the different way? She bought me bubble gums. And she put me inside of the buses to sell the bubble gums. I <laughs> remember I only sold one and the box has 24 uh, bubble gums. But again, I went to the bus station in order to sell my bubble gums. But I saw a lot, a lot of salespeople selling in Mexico, tacos, tortas, tostadas, whatever, really healthy products. But I was with bubble gum, what should I do? Easy, copy what they are doing 
No, that's the second issue why the business are failing, because business are copying other products, copying other person's strategy. That's why. So I went to find my grandfather. Everybody has a mentor. And this is another skill that you need to get, find a mentor. I went to ask my father, hey, what should I do in order to sell my bubble guns products? He told me, find a product and service that everybody needed and sell it in your own business if you want to be a millionaire. Wow, I got the clue. Sell a product or service that everybody needed and sell it in your own business. Mm. Business. Probably something that I can buy on the store. I don't know what business was. But after that, I came back to the bus station and I brought marzipans, something with peanut. And instead for copying what everybody was doing, with my marzipans, I start to tell all my customers the advantage and disadvantage for consuming the products that was in the market. So another skill in your business, another attribute for your business is don't try to convince the customer. Just show the advantage and disadvantage of your product and your customer, he might decide if he buy it or not. But again, I want to be a millionaire. I went with the grandfather again, like a sensei, you know. Uh, why my grandfather? Because he owned his own business for 60 years. He paid over a lot of things for us in order to be better than we were yesterday. So he was my mentor. Find somebody who you trust and be coachable. That's the other thing, be coachable. The next question was, how can I compete against the market and make money? A really interesting question. You know again, grandpa, find a product or service. I already know it. But how can I earn money and compete? Easy. Find a product that you can buy in one dollar and sell it in three dollars, is what the grandpa said. And with that two percent, you can keep going in your life. That's the maths of the grandpa, the two percent. So buy it in one and sell it in three. Oh, interesting. So another skill. You need to be networking. When I was on the bus station, well, the networking were the customers. I decided to go to the school. I decided to go a uh, Chamber of Commerce here in Salt Lake. I'm part of the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce for the leadership generation 2010 for another Chamber of Commerce. So always networking, always networking. Why? Because you don't know who want to be in love with your idea. Somebody going to believe in you when you, and he going to say, I believe in your project. This is the money, and I believe it. As soon as you start to fly, you're going to have next challenge. Then you're going to need to produce high quality products, or you need to provide high quality services. After that, I went to the high school and I finished the high school. And after the high school, I remember one of my friends invited me to belong to one of those multi-level systems. I was really motivated, eh, eh, a lot of training. But they taught me the, se the next skill you need to learn, how to sell. 
in the multi-level systems through the motivation, they're gonna tell you. How, uh, they're gonna teach you how to sell. They're gonna teach you how to push yourself. And remember, even a kick in the back puts you forward. So, always be in training, always believe in yourself, and keep going. The cosmetics gave me another experience. Money, they gave me a house, because after I demonstrate my ambition, that's another skill you need to learn. How to put your ambition before your, put your passion before your ambition. Put your passion before your ambition. I was super motivated. I, wa I am super ambitious, believe me. And the owner of the multi-level saw me and he put me in charge for the cosmetics production for the company. I was now producing the cosmetics. I was in charge for buying all the supplies. I learned the, how to buy, and he gave me just one mission, decrease the cost. And that's another thing that you always need to understand. Always you want to need to decrease your cost. Whatever you're going to do, decrease your cost. That needs to be part of your life, decreasing the cost. I got a new car, a new house, a new everything. And that glamour put me away from my own goal. What was my goal? My own business. But something in your life needs to happen in order for you to change and to review the vision. Because when you are now in a better position, in a better place, you need to refocus, to redeem. There is an interesting phrase, don't allow yourself to betray your goals. Because now, your status level, you are great. But don't be, don't, don't allow yourself to betray yourself. When I was in this position, I got married. She was pregnant. I got a lot of nice things. But suddenly, the baby died. When you have a calamity in, in your business, in your life, your savings account is going to face the problems. If you have no more money or no money, you cannot face that problems. Therefore, I decided to change the multi-level company and I went because I was crying, I was devastated. I went to a international company, EMS International. We were selling marketing services for the pharmaceutical companies in Mexico. I was a marketing research guy. While in the company, I noticed that my boss, he was for a different country. And the president of the company, he can speak six, seven languages. That's the other thing. You need to learn more than the language that you are speaking. At least you need to learn how to say hello to other people in seven languages. Because we are living in a globalized world, and you need to learn at least what they are looking for. Let's do an example. Raise your hand here, all those who can speak a different language. You see? That's another tendency. You want a business? OK. You want the business just here in your area with your neighbors? You, are, you want the business only in Utah State? You want the business in USA? Or you want the business internationally in the world? or in the galaxies, <laughs> something like that.
so many successful, successful stories start in the garage. So don't be afraid because you don't have the money to start your business. Start where everything is cheaper. If it's in the garage, do it over there. If it's in the apartment you are renting, if they allow it, start over there. But the thing is, start doing it. The biggest thing is being afraid. Being afraid to start your own business is the thing that puts you in the position that you are afraid. Oh, if the 90% of the business is going to fail in less than 10 years, why I want to make a business? For a simple reason. You have two attributes, wonderful attributes. You are different and unique. You, ne we're never going to find another you. Being different and unique is your competitive advantage. Because if you want a business, you're going to be your own boss, your own company, your own everything. That's what we, we said, believe in yourself. And working in that company, I partner with one of the owners for the company in the international company, and we create a place to train the marketing managers for that time. I think it was 1988. In 1988, the marketing managers, they don't know anything about computers, even Excel, or other things. So we did a business plan and create that. If we can train five managers, we can get money from them. Therefore, the return of the investment, we're going to get the money in three months because we were collecting money from them. Very expensive, very expensive. Remember the rule? Buy something in one peso and one dollar and sell it in three dollars. And with that percent, you're going to keep going. So the owner of the company, he decided to provide the money. We bought six computers. We started to training the managers. But the forecast said that we only have customers for six months. Use your creativity. That's another thing. Use your creativity. Oops. You know, I sold it, but I never learned how to fix it and even how to use it. <laughs> it, it was my best experience is selling the computers. Create a way to sell the computers. So in that time, computers was something expensive. We decide and we focus to be in the supplies. So now, if we're going to sell something, if we're going to create a company, our company needs to be bulletproof. Because I don't want to be part of the 96% of the failures. So we find now a niche. We were selling diskettes after training the managers. From one box, we start selling 100 bucks a month, 1,000, 10,000, 150,000 boxes a month. We got three employees. We got 10 employees. We got ever, a lot of employees. Why? Because your creativity is going to put you where there are profit. If something is hard for others, it won't be hard for you. And tell the others that's hard for them, not for you. That's what your creativity is going to tell you. Always training yourself in the new technologies. 
That was one of my problems. I was focused just in the management, in the marketing, in the financing, in the selling. We were training in a lot of things. But no, I wasn't prepared for using the technology. You, you don't need to get that mistake. After we were growing, we partnered with a company because they were bigger than us, and they start to supply the diskettes. What happened? They took 75% of our customers. Oof, by that time we were 100 employees. Due to the creativity, we start selling the computers. We start selling the computer 286 and 386 megahertz in that time. You can see how long I was. Next skill you need to learn. Legal laws. Learn the regulations from your company. Learn the regulations for the product and services that you have in mind. If you have it in mind, just put it in action, but learn the regulations. I have created a lot of businesses, but because I missed this part, I got in a nightmare sometimes. So learn the regulations in order to avoid that kind of problems. After that, in 1994, we were the kings of the world. We got a big building, 150 employees, we got the first award, international award, in Gold Coast, Australia. Because we were selling computers. The brand was Acer at that time. And they took us to Australia. In 1994, you remember, was the World Cup. Here in the Rose Bowl in Santana, California. I was over there watching Brazil, watching Italy, a lot of things. I got a lot of money now. I got a life, really nice life. I was flying around the world. Just for doing my own business allows me to be and to allows me to be in 28 airports around the world. Because that is the things then you're never gonna get if you still being an employee. If you are the bi owner business and you continue getting that skills, you can do amazing things in your life. But you need to learn something interesting like giving back to your community. Your community is really important. So be part of some that non-profit organizations be part of coaching somebody. You are really good in math or English or take one international like me and teach him Spanish, something. What happened? I have noticed that many speeches of my friends when they are talking to the students or to the audiences, they focus their speech in the success. For me, I would like to teach you today all, most of my failures, because through my failures, I learn more than my success. So remember, I have a wonderful company, but suddenly, 1994, Mexico, the great devaluation of the money, of the coin. So the government decided to take the advantage from the grandpa for the 1%, and by that time in Mexico, $1 was 3.5 pesos. And in December, 20 was 1 peso, $1, 7 pesos. All the computers that we were buying were in dollars, and we were selling in pesos. So people give us money in advance in order to get a computer. 
50%, some of them 100%. After the devaluation, we cannot buy the computers. We decide to return, to get back the money, or even return the inventory to the providers. They didn't receive it. They want their computers because it was Christmas, December 20 to Christmas. So suddenly it was a nightmare. And after the nightmare, this was my company. So all the plans and everything that I had planned failed. And now I was in the 96% of the failure companies. The 46% is the incompetency, leaving height for the business, lack of planning. The 30% is unbalanced experience and lack of managerial experience. Nobody knows. Who can resist a devaluation, 100% devaluation? Just try to think, 100% devaluation. The other 11%, the lack of experience in line of good of services. And the 1%, disaster. So, if you do the math, my company was now in the 88% of the failure. I start to sell in everything, cars, uh, buildings, everything, in order to face the problems. It was my world Christmas. That was me. In order to avoid that picture, is you? I want to run away because everybody said that I was a really bad person. And that's the problem on the business. When you start to get running a business, as long as the business is a really successful business, you're gonna be like, a, you're gonna be treated like a king like a prince, princess, but as soon as the business is in this position, you are a criminal. That's why you need to learn the laws. But let me tell you, you are not a criminal. You are like the Star Wars, a Padawan. <laughs> you are somebody in training, an entrepreneur, a business person in training. So what was wrong? Why I cannot make it? If we did a plan, if we get the coaching, if we get everything. If you're gonna export, lend the regulations of the country and the laws. That was another problem that I got too. Emotional resilience. In business, what happened in business is not emotional. That's, what, that's why people say it's not personal, it's only business. If something is wrong, well, it's wrong, it happens. It happens to everybody, it not happens only for you. So keep going. I spent several years trying my emotional resilience. One of my friends from the city bank, who was a high executive, he sent me to a psychology. And I went. I feel like I was crazy. I feel like, what happened? What happened with all the parts of my company? Finally, I lost the company. I lost everything. If that was not enough, I got divorced. When you are the boss, uh, one of the rules of the leadership is whatever happened in your group, you are the responsible guy. You are gonna be responsible. But leadership is not making the work for the others. Leadership is making the others make, make, the, make their work. In other words, make the others better than you. That's the real leadership. 
So the devaluation, all, all the faults, etc., etc. What I have learned, the devaluation wasn't my fault, believe me. I wasn't the president in that time. The problems in the company was my responsibility because that's the other skill that you need to learn, how to forecast. You need to forecast everything. I don't know you can buy a crystal, crystal ball, but did you find it? I can buy one. But did you find a crystal ball? The meaning is always forecast. Forecast your profit, forecast your ideas, forecast your lie, forecast everything. When you are in this situation, never, never lose the relationship and communication with your partners, people, and providers. Otherwise, a misunderstanding is coming. Be careful, always be in touch. After this situation, now you are a better person and you are ready for learning again this laws, all the regulations. Remember, the biggest problem in this country, when I came to this country, in order to networking, we create Entre Latinos, which was a Spanish show. We went to talk with the governor, John Husband Jr. in that time, the Labor Commission, everything. Because we want to understand the laws. When I came to this country 11 years ago, I even speak any English, neither today, but you are doing a good job. Choose your problems. Yes. An entrepreneur, a business person, is all those who are solving problems, who think in problems, who eat problems. When go to the bathroom, poop problems. Everything related with problems. That's According to me, and according to my experience, that's a entrepreneur. When I started the internet in Mexico, we have 64K, and that was the speed for the internet. And we were in top of the world with that technology. Well, uh, we start to refocus the idea. If you want to create your business, start refocusing your idea. But you're never going to get anything without education. Educate yourself always. In that way, you need to refocus the idea. What you're going to achieve with the ideas. If others are telling you that you are crazy, then you are in the right direction. So you're going to envision the way that you want to be. Start planning your retirement. Yes. I told you that you can choose your problems. If you can choose your problems, start thinking in your retirement. I want to be in like a place like this in my retirement. If that is the future, what should I do now in the present in order to achieve my goal? It's the way that you can choose your problems. Why? Because problems give you the skill to make decisions. Good or bad, but make decisions. You're always going to make decisions. You're always, always going to do that. Learn the technologies of the moment and the tendencies. That's the other. Remember the crystal ball? What, what products or services? Will your product or services gonna satisfy the current situation or the future situation? What will happen with the product or service you are doing? Ponder, ponder how to stay relevant in changing markets. 
Otherwise, the market will leave you. If I continue selling only diskettes, nobody knows now the diskettes. You are too younger to think in a diskette. But the diskette is the grand, grand, grandmother from the USB. So always, you need to learn how to operate your product or service. We were really creative by that time. We start now to partner with better companies. Partner always with the people who are going to give you value, who are going to give you prestige, who are going to give you more attributes of the ones you have. Obviously, if he's going to partner with you, it's because you are a valuable person for them. So now we decide to start again. We got the opportunity now. We were wholesaling. We got the opportunity now to buy a store in a mall in the town of Mexico, in the downtown. But we don't have again the money. What we did? People is going to get to know you in what you were, are doing. Because we were doing for a long time, and we're still in the market facing any situation. You never need to run away. You need to face any situation. Be responsible for your acts. Be responsible for your action. So the owner of the mall, because we were selling Hewlett Packard, and we were the only guys who, who were selling that brand, they give us the opportunity to be in the store with one year credit plan. So we start again. Instead of selling to dealers, now we were selling to the end user, the customer, directly. That was super easy for us now. We start planning, we start selling, start growing out. From one store, we got four, five, six, until 20, until 40 stores. Again, because there is another skill. Once you have failed, it's easy to get success. Think how many times you have made a mistake, and through that mistake, next time you try it, or next time, next time, you are getting better. We start to get an international award now. From the small company, we start to grow up, grow up, grow up, until 250 employees. Now, by 1994, uh, no, 2004, we got a big show. Uh, like the Seoul Palace here, the space from the Seoul Palace. Our own company, only our company did a computer show in Mexico. It was called the Back to School. Well, guess how many salesperson, a thousand salesperson working for our company? 250 employees. We sold 10,000 computers for branded and OEM computers in only eight days. It was amazing, the 10% of the market. So we start to grow up again. For one reason, we start to apply in all the concepts, reducing the cost, partnered with the right guys, understanding the regulation, the laws of the country. S we start selling in cash, no credit. The biggest credit we got was the credit card. Most credit card. That's why we start selling in that way. Because we don't like to get involved in the same problems. So we like zero, zero problems in liabilities with money. After that, people start to say again, you are crazy. But remember the idea. When people say that you are crazy, you are in the right direction. That's something for you that you need to understand. When the market grows, when your business grows, it's going to give you the vision for more businesses. So what we, we, we start to doing? 
exceeding the expectations from our customers. The computer, let me tell you something from the computers. In the past, the computers were rigid. Uh, remember the, the big screens like this size, the 15, 17, 19 uh, inches? Well, it was rigid. If this computer was with this huge screen, you cannot change it. We start to do it. We start to tailor the computers like the customer wanted. Therefore, you n when you are controlling your niche, you can get the profit and the keys that you need. So, return to the basic always. Why you want to get a company? Why you want to get a business? Why you want to get, why you want to be independent? For a simple reason. You have all the potential, you have everything you need to do it. Don't copy others. Use your own creativity. I'm talking a lot about creativity because people think, oh, no, I'm not creativity. Let me tell you why. But you are. That's, that's the biggest difference. Our biggest success, we profit using the circumstances such as the changing market at, the ad at our advantage. The short term of the living of the product, it was our highest profit. Another thing, most of you are millennium guys. Generation X, Y. You should start forecasting your profits in the short term. In the past, when I want to get a loan in the bank, they ask me, Five years projection, financial projection for wah, 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 wah. No, today, if you are planning getting your business, plan your profits in the short term. The change of the technology. The technology all sides is gonna give you an idea what product or services you need to sell in your own company. We were selling the computers, right? But by the time that I created my business, it was the boom of the computer. Therefore, the hard drives, motherboards, memories, screens, was the other boom, because it's part of the market. If the market, the tendencies of the market now are in AA, artificial intelligence, robotics, or something like that, you only need to know the components that you need for that market. If you start to sell in that things, you're gonna be in top of the market. Well, what happened at the end? Why I'm here today, 11 years ago? We got a really wonderful company. In Latin America, we have a joke. When you are a successful, business person, you have a reward. It's called kidnapped. Kidnapped. Now I need to get bodyguards, I need to get bulletproof cars, whatever. Decide to sell company, decide to, to get married. Fortunately, I found the right girl, the best girl on the air. She is with me today and I start new life. And I cannot stay by myself. I need to do a business. But 11 years ago, I was in the situation that you were today. What kind of business? I was in a different country, different language, different everything, different food. Well, it's possible, believe me. I created an advising company. We were importing, exporting products. Uh, we create housing centers for the international students. We create different businesses. Uh, we partner with the Chamber of Commerce, with a lot of things. So what's the only limit that you might encounter in this situation? The only problem is gonna be here if you are afraid. 
try to do it and you will achieve it. So, conclusion. What will be my fine nuggets for you? Let me put here. Believe in yourself, you can do it, no matter what. You are the best competitive advantage that you have. Number two, be innovative, unique, and different. Don't copy. Number three, you never need to convince the customers to buy your products. Just give them the advantage of buying your products and the disadvantage of not. Number four, do not allow yourself to betray your own dreams. Number five, treat failures as a learning opportunity. A mistake is an opportunity to fine tone your skills in the business world. Refocus your vision and reach higher heights with not only better focus, but better aims. And if you notice now, this is the tendency. Robots replacing humans. Are you really prepared? You're going to be replaced. Don't worry. Technology always has been created jobs opportunities than replacing people. The only thing the people need to do is train yourself in the new technologies. Uh, most of you have seen Willy Wonka, the movie in, in the factory, when the guy was replaced because of the robots. They lay out this guy. But later, they hired this guy because he was capable to fix the robots. So the robot is an extension of your business. It's not your rival. It's an extension. I hope you guys can do business. Do your best.